Hello and welcome to American Solar Supply as we present a video demonstration on building Kit A. My name is Gary Gehring. I will be your host today. In this video, we will assemble a 5 volt, 3.5 watt solar panel. This, cell, this solar panel is great for charging most cell phones and personal devices. We will be using a vacuum forming method and the latest products in the solar industry to build this panel. When you are done with this presentation, you will gain the ability to create lightweight, flexible, power producing products. American Solar Supply, the future of solar. Let's get started. In this kit, you will be tabbing 10 cells to make two strings of five cells producing five volts. The kit contains the following items, a TPT sheet or backing film, A EVA sheet, which will be cut into two sheets and used to bond your panel together. And a ETFE film bag. The ETFE will be used both as the face of your solar panel and also as the bag in which we are producing your solar panel in. We also include in the kit solar cells. These are one inch by three inch poly solar cells with a silver tab wire bus on the front and back. We are also including tab wire. Tab wire is rolled copper, it's rolled flat and then coated in solder and these run from cell to cell to carry the electricity along. Also in the kit is a flux pin. Flux is used to prep the silver for soldering the tab wire to the cells. Rope caulk is also used, uh, supplied in the kit to seal your ETFE bag while you vacuum form your panel. And finally, we include a HDMI receptacle for ease of powering your devices. On this receptacle, we will trim the two wires we're not using, keeping the black and red wire available to connect to your solar panel. You will also need a scissors, a heat gun, a soldering iron, in the demonstration, I am using a Tinma soldering iron and I heat my soldering iron to 830 Fahrenheit. You also need a vacuum source and adapter. These parts are all available both from our website, from eBay, and from Amazon. We will start by sorting through our cells and assuring that the cells are all facing the same direction so that we can start tabbing our cells. Tabbing is the process of applying tab wire to the bar of the cell. As you can see, the front side of the cell has a full bar on it, while the back side of the cell only has a partial bar. We want to make sure that all the partial bars are faced the same direction. As we tab the front of the cell, we want to make sure that the front tabs all overhang the cell in the proper direction.
Now we will start the process of tabbing our cells. Once we've assured that the cells are all facing the same way, we will attach the tab wire to the face or blue side of the cell by means of soldering. Using the flux pin, apply a coating of flux to the cell bar. Then lay tab wire along the cell bar with the end of the tab wire extending off the cell opposite of the bar on the back side of the cell. Using your preheated soldering iron, solder the tab wire in place. As you can see, I pick up my flux pin. Depressing the tip allows the flux to saturate the tip of the pen. You apply the flux to the bar of the face of the cell and then lay the tab wire across the bar, not quite to the end of the cell. Leaving a gap at the end of the tab wire in the cell prevents the tab wire from shorting out the cell. As you can see, I applied the heat to the tab wire and the tab wire bonded straight to the cell. You will check the back of the cell to assure the tab wire was put on in the right direction, opposite the rear bar. Then trim the tab wire to fix the, fit the next cell, approximately 3 quarters to 1 inch. As you can see, I'm working, my workstation has a glass plate over it. Glass is flat and is great for absorbing heat while tabbing cells. This is a good service to work on as it helps to prevent the cracking of cells through the cells absorbing too much heat. In this close-up picture, you can see the flux from the flux pin on the cell. Place the tab wire over the bar. And using the soldering iron, solder in place. You will repeat these steps until all the cells are tabbed. The next process is stringing the cells together. Stringing is the process of connecting the tab wire we've just applied from one cell to the next. The tab wire actually runs the, from the back of one cell to the face of the next. The sun shining on the cell pulls energy through the cell to the back of the cell. The tab wire collects that energy and takes it to the face of the next cell. When soldering, remember to add the soldering flux to the cell so that your tab wire will adhere to the silver. You can see we've laid the cells on their face along a straight edge. Using the straight edge to line the cells up, 
we're applying the tab wire from the face of one cell to the back of the next. As you can see it's at this stage that I'm trimming the tab wire to fit the next cell. I apply the flux and I carefully place the cell with the tab wire on the back of the cell next to it. Holding the cells in place, I apply heat to the tab wire, bonding it to the previous cell. In this process, we are creating a string of cells. For this panel, we will create two strings of five cells each. Each string of cells produces a two and a half volts and when we connect them with a bus wire we will have a five volt panel. One of the most confusing parts about cells is that each cell, no matter how big or little, produces one half of a volt or 0.5 volts. What changes with the size of the cell is the wattage output of each cell. In this case, the cell is one inch by three inch, but a six inch by six inch cell of the same cell type would have four watts Once you soldered your five cells together, on the last cell you will apply a positive tab wire off the back of the last cell. This will connect to our bus wire when we lay the two strings next to each other. Again, the backs of the cells are the positive side the blue side or the face of the cell is the negative side. Now go ahead and build your second string of cells. When assembling the cells, as you can see, I tried to keep about an eighth inch between each cell. In the video demonstration at this time, we are tabbing six cells together. However, for the purpose of this kit, we will only be tabbing five cells. Now that we have the two strings of cells completed, we will line the two strings up next to each other with the blue side up. Remember, the bar coming off the back of the cell is the positive, while the bar coming off the tab wire bar coming off the top of the cell is the negative. We will line the two cells up with the negative and the positive on opposite ends. Now that we have our cells in the position we want them, we will now attach a bus wire across the top of the cells. The bus wire is used to connect strings of cells together. Okay. 
You will lay a piece of tab wire across the two strings of cells and using the soldering iron, touch the connection to solder the two pieces together. Remember the cells are laid in, in series next to each other with a positive and negative ends on opposite ends. Once you've soldered the bus wire across the two strings, go ahead and trim up the excess wire. Be careful not to clip the cells. Now spin the cells around so that you can attach the HDMI cable to the positive and negative connections on the opposite end. The red wire will connect to the positive tab from the back of the cell and the negative black wire will attach to the negative tab from the face of the cell. You will need to use a little bit of flux on the wire to get to adhere to the solder. Now that you have the wires soldered to the tab wire, go ahead and trim off the excess pieces. This concludes the electrical portion of, of the assembly of the panel. At this point, you actually have a functioning solar panel. Now we have to protect those cells and its function to make it durable. To do this, we will be using EVA, TPT, and ETFE film. First, we will take the TPT and use it as a template to cut two pieces of EVA to the same size. Now that you've cut your EVA out, you'll lay your TPT sheet with the dull side up, the shiny side against your building surface. So putting your dull side up, lay a sheet of EVA over top the TPT. 
Then you will carefully set your tab solar cells onto the EVA. Carefully position the solar cells and the wires how you, how you, in the position that you would like to see it. Then take the extra EVA and put a piece above and below the heavier cord of the connector. This is used for the purpose of strengthening your connector so that your panel lasts a long time. Once you have all your pieces in place, you can go ahead and lay the last sheet of EVA over the top of the panel. Now your panel is ready to be vacuum formed. We will prepare the bag by opening it up and taking the rope claw caulk and running it along the inside of the opening of the bag. Then we will take a cloth and lay it along the bottom side of the bag with the cloth folded over on one end. The cloth is inside the bag to help evacuate all the air out of the bag during the vacuum forming process. Once the cloth is in place, lay your solar panel inside centered up inside the bag. Make sure the cloth is larger than your panel so it it spreads out underneath the panel past all the edges. With the panel inside you will take your vacuum tube and wrap the end of it in caulk and insert the tube so that the very end of the tube goes inside the folded cloth. Then you will seal the bag around the tube and continue to seal the rest of the bag along the edge. Once you're satisfied that everything is in position and that all the wrinkles are out from above the panel, you can proceed to vacuum your panel using a vacuum cleaner or vacuum pump. I am demonstrating for the purpose of this video with a vacuum cleaner. Watch as I hook my vacuum adapter to the vacuum cleaner how quick the panel will suck down Once you've applied vacuum to the panel, go ahead and check all the edges, make sure they're sealed, and then smooth out the vacuum, the bag, over top of your cells and panel. The smoother the bag is over the top of your panel, the better your panel will look once it is completed. Once you're satisfied, with your va the vacuum of the panel, you will then take your heat gun and starting in the center of the panel, you will circle, do small circles working your way to the outside of the panel. Be careful not to overheat the cells and the panel as this will cause bubbles to form on the surface of your panel. 
you can see where the EVA in the center is already melting and starting to turn blue. As the EVA becomes transparent, go ahead to the next spot. Do not overheat the EVA as again it will form gases and bubbles in the surface of the panel. An alternative would be to heat the panel on a cookie sheet in a preheated oven between 275 and 300 degrees for approximately 15 minutes. Spend extra time around the edges of the panel to assure that the edges are bonded well. Once you've completed heating the whole panel, go ahead and let, set the panel aside and let cool for a few minutes. Then you can cut the panel out of the bag using a scissors. Do not try and peel the bag back from the panel, but simply cut around the panel removing the excess materials. Now that all the excess is gone, go ahead and remove the cloth from the back. You might have to trim the edges of the TPT film to remove this as some of the EVA has squeezed out and has bonded to the, the cloth backing. Be careful as you're cutting to not cut your wires or near any of the solar cells. At this time I want to congratulate you on producing your first power producing solar panel. You can take your panel and you can trim the edges round off the corners, punch holes in it for use in your school bags or to attach to a backpack or to put in a binder and use it to charge your cell phones, devices, or other projects. I want to thank you for participating in the building of Kit A and building your first 5 volt 3.5 watt solar panel. This video and kit is a product of Gearing Corporation and is protected by U.S. law. American Solar Supply, the future of solar.